Next gentleman, and I'm going to introduce, as you can see, he's had, uh, he has some health issues, and uh, he wants to come up here to speak, but we're not going to let him. But I do have, I do want to introduce, he and I were teammates in the Potsdam State. And I want to begin by reading a, a letter that his high school coach, Luke Kibling, sent to us. He said, many congratulations on being inducted to the New York Basketball Hall of Fame. You were going into your junior year of high school and I introduced you to the sport of cross country. I knew cross country would help you, but it was going to be tough for you. You stuck it out and you built up your wind and your legs. I know you felt better about yourself when cross country season ended and we're ready for our basketball season together. I remember that hot week at Selgerties that was tough also. Thank God for cross country. And you even met Coach Donahue and Coach Knight. I could write a book as to how much you progressed in our two tough years together. I first met a very raw prospect. And I hope I instilled the value of hard work and dedication and what it would mean for you. And then you went to Potsdam and you had Coach Jerry Wells for four years. And you think I was tough. But you really came on under Jerry. He made you blossom into a very good player. You still hold the rebounding record at Potsdam. Uh, Derek Rowland, you heard that, right? <laughs> he still holds the rebounding record at Potsdam. <laughs> NBA. Uh, that was a long time ago. Lou thinks it was 50 years or better, but it wasn't quite that long. But that record still stands. Have a great night, as you totally deserve this honor. Always in your corner. 85-year-old Coach Lou Kidman. Now, Ted and I are lifetime friends. We were teammates. It's a friendship that has endured, despite the fact that he's a little bit left of Jane Fonda and I'm a little bit right of John Wayne. <laughs> Ted's one of the smartest people I've ever encountered in my 70 years. He can read at the 12th grade level. <laughs> He is fluent in English, and he took the SATs. <laughs> Ted still thinks he's smarter than all the kids today because he can write in, cur in cursive, he can do long division, and he can tell time on a clock with hands. <laughs> he will, though, admit that this generation is better informed, but he still will say that ours was smarter. Here's why. When he got his first car, the manual gave you directions on how to attach jumper cables in case there was an emergency. He lived in Watertown, so that happened all. Kids today, their first manual tells them, don't drink the fluid in the battery. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Sadly, though, the first three years that Ted and I played together, Ted was a virgin. <laughs> Hold on now. It was a choice. It wasn't his choice. <laughs> but a choice, no <laughs> Ted started his coaching career after his after college in Poland. Not the country. But in the basketball gen genetically deprived community north of Utica. We were playing together. As a matter of fact, with Jim and Mike Lee, who were just inducted this, this August into this uh, August group. And uh, we were playing with the Utica Records, a semi pro team, and we would play our games on Sunday nights. And uh, I would go down the night before. And for some reason, Ted had a Sunday practice. He said, Mike, you, you've got to come in fire on my team. He says, we're just not very good. So we get into the gym, and Ted says, I want you to go work with number 12. So I walk over to number 12, and I'm going to work with him, and I, I look him straight in the eye. And I turn around and say, just a second. And I walk back over to Ted, and I spoke very quietly, because I didn't want to you know, be insensitive. I said, Ted, that young man is cross-eyed. Why am I working with him? And he 
said, without, without Mr. Beagle, he's my best shooter. <laughs> That is a true story. <laughs> it is not his coaching we celebrate tonight. Instead, we celebrate Ted Benz, the player, the teammate, the Potsdam Bear. Because Coach Kipling made him run cross country, he could really move horizontally. <laughs> <laughs> Vertically was a challenge, and yet he still out rebounded Derek Brown. <laughs> he had great hands. He could really finish around the basket. What he never did, he never tried to do the things he couldn't do. He played within himself. He played within the system, and, and he was a winner. We had a very, very good team. We didn't enjoy what Derek and, and Mo and the guys who were here tonight did with Coach, with Coach K Mac because at the time we played, there was no Division Three term. There was a Division Three and Division Two were combined into the college division tournament. And so we made it to the playoffs a couple of times, but we had to play against all scholarship schools. Yeah, I know. Boo hoo. Well, why anyway, don't we win? Well, the, the truth is, we were playing against Morgan State. They had a guy named Leonardo Webster. If you remember him, if you don't remember who that is, his nickname was the Human Eraser. So the first time we're playing at Hartwick in the tournament, and I penetrate, I kick it off to Ted. Take, Ted takes his normal jump shot, and then gets whiplash as the ball goes into the third row in the other end. I still contend to this day that it was goaltending. Had they called it, maybe the outcome would have been different. But they went on and they went on to win the national championship that year. I think that where Ted stood out most, as good an offensive player as he was, and he's a tenth all time leading scorer at Boston. But despite all the great players that Jerry has had, Ted's the all time leading rebounder 47 years later. Two time all ECAC center, and at that time that was Division II and Division III in the East Coast Athletic Conference. Three time all SUNYAC center. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted Metz.
I learned, and then I met Luke Kiplin. He wrote a very nice letter tonight. He's very upset that he can't be here, but COVID restrictions keep him at home. It's an interesting thing that uh, Luke took us to camp. We went to Saugerties to uh, Jack Donahue's camp. Uh, Jack Donahue was famous for being Lou Elsinger's high school coach. At that point, Bobby Knight was there, and he delivered the Thursday lecture, which was the big lecture of the week. Now, Bobby Knight was known as a defensive coach. He was at Army at the time. He had not gone on to Indiana. <coughs> he was at Army. And he lined everybody up around the court. There's probably 120, 130 kids there. Lined everybody up around the court and described the defensive position to us. You know, you got to stay down. You got to keep your hands up. Don't put your hands down. Keep your hands up. Be able to move sideways laterally. Mike says, I still can't do that. But he says, you know, this was the way. He said, now, all right, everybody's in this position. I want you to hold this position. I'm going to talk about 45 minutes. Now, as you know, defense hurts. So we're standing there, and, and Lou came by, Coach Kibling at that point, but now we're Lou because we've been friends for seven years. Lou came by, and he said, holding up the back of my shorts. I mean, I'm, I'm getting wobbly and weak and, I, and all this stuff. I'm fine. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm holding on here. All right. By the way, Derek, does it make you feel bad that I'm the all-time leading rear <laughs> I, fell, I fell walking up to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you get praise from Mike when he's doing his speech, you're doing well. So he walked around and he was holding my, the back of my shorts up. There was only three kids from our school at camp that week. And he was helping us all out, you know, so we could relax a little bit. But 45 minutes is a long time to hold a defensive position. A kid at the end of the court. Stands up, shakes himself off. I'm shaking. <laughs> shakes himself off and looks at, at Bobby Knight. Now Bobby Knight walked over to me and he just looked at me. The next thing I know, Bobby Knight picked this kid up and threw him 15 feet in the air. He goes, I'm telling you, son, defense hurts. <laughs> At that point, I decided I was going to be an offensive player. <laughs> we had a good career in high school. We got, I got better. I worked hard. Uh, I can't emphasize enough in this position how Lou Kibling helped develop me. And he always said that. He goes, I just developed you and Jerry took care of you and made you, the play, you, know, made you a good player. I got to Potsdam and you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about Potsdam. Everybody thinks Mike Dean is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> well, the fact was, I made him a better passer. <laughs> when he got there, we, we just, he transferred from Hobart in the, in the archaic record, records and rules of the day. He couldn't play on the uh, uh, so he couldn't play right away. He had to sit out a year. So we played on the second team together. The first six, the first six passes he threw me bounced off the side of my head. I said, you know, this can't be, he's not that good a passer. <laughs> After four or five days, he started hitting me in the hands and I felt much better. We had a great career, I still. I got better and better. Peter Riley is here, a teammate on my freshman team. He was the all-conference center the year before I was, or the year actually before neither one of us was because we split the position sophomore year and averaged like 25 points and 15 rebounds. But I always had great teammates. I always say this. You know, I, I had an interesting conversation with the two teammates that hurt me last night. 
<laughs> and they said, well, you know, Ted, you, you were kind of the star at the end. You know, you, you scored all the points, did the rebound, and blah, blah, blah. But you just can't play basketball without teammates. I was very fortunate to have Michael for a number of years. I was, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Tony, that's the signal, isn't it? Wrap it up. <laughs> All right. So anyways, we yeah. up, Tony. I had a great time. I had a great career. I was very fortunate that Rich Johns took the pressure off me my freshman year because he was my RA. And he said to me as I walked in the dorm first day, hey, do you want to play for my intramural basketball team? So if it didn't work out with the varsity, I had an option. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.